Hi, I'm Chess, and you're watching Chess's Crazy Creations. To start this project, you'll need some empty used cans. The first thing we want to do is take the labels off. So most of the time, it's just getting it started, but they'll peel right off. That's the nice part about all the labels on cans. Now, not all cans will do this, but most will. So we just remove the label and we'll be focusing on this part of the can right here. Next, we're gonna take fill the cans with ice and you can fill it with as much ice as you want. And then you're gonna go ahead and add water to the can and you wanna make sure to fill it all the way up to the top. Now that the ice and water is in each of them, I'm gonna go ahead and place them into the freezer until they're frozen nice and solid. Here's a quick look at them frozen, and now we're ready for the next step. So the first thing I'm gonna do is lay a towel down to protect my surface, and I'm wearing gloves because the cans are super cold. So the next thing I wanna do is lay a can down and you might wanna check and make sure the if you have any residual glue, you probably want that on the back side. Or if you have a seam in your can, sometimes that's nice to put it on the back. So we're gonna be placing it like this and talking about the next step. Now the can tends to frost up. So I like to remove the frost so I can see what I'm doing. Now it may come back, but you just kinda of wipe it off. From here, I like to use a dry erase marker, but you could also make a template with the paper. The reason I don't use the paper is because I need to work with these bumps right in here. Um, if you draw a design that's kind of an odd pattern, it's, it's harder for you to get clean holes in this. So again, checking my back to make sure I've got it where I want. I just start making a little design with my dry erase marker. And the other reason I like a dry erase marker is that you can always fix, you know, your design. You can move it over a little bit. You can erase it and start over. But I'm gonna go ahead and finish this design and I'll show you what it looks like. So here's a quick look at the first design. It's a heart, it's a little hard to tell, but I can see it. And now it's time for the next step. And I'll go ahead and make a design on my other can as well. So this is called a punch, but you could easily use a nail. So what you're gonna do is place the punch onto a hole, or onto a mark, I should say, and then we're gonna take a hammer and just lightly tap so you can make a little indent onto your can. This is gonna help us with the next step. So once you have the first indent, we're gonna go again so you can see a little bit closer and you just place it on the mark and give it a little tap at the top. And I've got a little indent there. So here is what the indent looks like. And I'll continue doing that on all of them. So again, placing the punch on, taking your hammer, giving it a light tap. And again, there you go, you've got your indents. So now you can see all the indents and we're gonna go on to the next step. So for this next step, I'll be using our Black & Decker drill and I picked a bit out that matched the same as the tip on my punch. That will help this go into here. So the point of the punch and these little indents was to hold the drill straight so that I'm not sliding all over and drilling at the same time. So I will put the drill a bit into the hole and then drill straight down. So I place the drill bit in. And I wait till I get all the way through and it makes it nice and easy. You can go through really quick with a drill. Like so. So I'm gonna go ahead and keep drilling all the way around and I'll show you what that looks like. So always remember to wear safety goggles when you are using a drill. And here's the whole design ready to go. Now the one thing we don't wanna forget is you could use your luminary like this, 
but if you wanna hang it, we need to punch holes in the sides so that we can add something to hang them with. Now I've made my little punch hole. Now I could definitely use the drill, but the other option would be just to use the punch. So I made a nice big hole just using this punch to use to hang it with down the road. So I need to do the other side. And again, you can make this hole as big as you want. Depends upon the material you're gonna use to hang it. So, got a little crooked there, but again, if I hang with the right material, it will hang nicely. So just big enough on both sides to get whatever you're gonna hang with through it. So this one is done, and now I just wait for the ice to come out of it. I'm gonna do the other one. Um, one of the tips I have for getting the ice out quickly is just setting it in a sink full of water. It'll pop right out super fast. Now I'm probably gonna stick with the same design, but you could have a lot of fun with these. Let kids decorate them. Um, you could do let just random holes, um, kind of however you want. Now, quick note, this is my second one. And I just wanna give you this option if you want. So here's my punch. This could also be a nail. I'm gonna go ahead and tap it. So I've made the little divot. But if you don't have a drill or you're not comfortable working with a drill, you can keep this punch and keep going until you get all the way through. So that would be another easy way with no power tools to do this project. So I just take the frozen cans, lay them in the water, and this will loosen up the ice and then it will pop right out. So now I just empty the ice and let that dry and I'll let the cans dry and then we'll talk about what we can do next. So the cans are all done, the ice is removed and now it is time to decorate them if you want. You could stop here and just put the string in or wire in and then just leave it like this, but I'm gonna take it a step further. For this next step, I'll be using Folk Art Home Decor Chalk Paint in the color white. So, choosing a paint means making sure you're gonna look at where you're gonna be putting it. So I'm gonna go ahead and paint this white with the chalk paint. Um, I'll be doing the other one as well. Now the one thing you'll wanna make sure is that the paint doesn't clog your holes. So you may have to go with a toothpick and poke through those once you get the paint on. So I'm gonna paint this whole thing with the chalk paint. I'm gonna let it dry, and then I'm gonna go ahead and see if it needs a second coat. So I'll continue doing this, and once these are all painted white, I'll show you what they look like, and then I'll tell you what I'm doing next. Now that they're all painted with the chalk paint, I'm gonna focus on the center of the heart. I'm gonna be using the color Folk Art Treasure Gold in the colors Gold and Rose Gold. So I'm just gonna go ahead and paint on the gold color. Now it may need one more than one coat, so I'll just paint the first coat on. Go ahead and let it dry, and then add a second coat. And then I'm gonna repeat the same thing on the second one with the rose gold. So again, just painting on the first coat, getting it on there, letting it dry, and then adding a second coat if it needs it. So. I'll continue doing this and let these dry and I'll show you what it looks like and we'll talk about the next step. So you can use a lot of different things to hang them with, or like I said, you could leave them plain and just set them in different places, but I'm gonna use some twine and you can find this at the reg just Walmart or online. Uh, you can also use some galvanized wire or things like that, depending upon where you're putting them again. So I always like to go bigger rather than smaller. So I have plenty that I can adjust. So I'm gonna cut off two pieces for my two cans, like so. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and get a knot in one end. And I'm probably gonna double knot it because I made the holes a really good size. So if you didn't wanna do this, you could also string it through and tie it, but I'm gonna go this route. And then once I think I've got the knot big enough, what I do is I get my can and I thread from the inside out, pull it through 
till the knot's there. Then I go to the other side and I go in on this side, pull it up. And now I wanna go ahead and make a knot here. And again, you could go a couple knots. You wanna make sure it stays inside. Like so. And then you pull it. And there you go. Now you've got it so it can hang. So I'll go ahead and do this to the other one. Okay, now they're all ready. So let's talk about what to do inside. And there are so many possibilities. Part of it depends though on what you use for the top. So if you did not use anything like the juke or the twine and you use metal instead or you just didn't use anything, you could go ahead and use a tea light as one option and light the candle and put it in. You can use a votive and place it in and light that. If you used any sort of ribbon or this jute or anything else, you'll probably not want to use a live flame because we don't want to light a fire. So I'm going to show you what I like to use. And I like to use these battery operated LED lights. Um, I get them at the dollar store, but you can buy them online. They're waterproof and they, these ones happen to change colors, but you can get just regular light as well or those battery operated tea light candles. And I just place them into the bottom and then when it gets dark, they go ahead and light up. So let's go set them up and see what they look like. So before I put them outside, here's a quick look at what they look like while it's light out and another look at what they look like when it's dark. Now I did make another set of these with spray paint and Waverly chalk paint. So here's a quick look at those in both the day and the evening settings. We have some hooks on our front porch where we hang holiday lights. So I'm gonna be hanging our lanterns on these. Here are our lanterns hanging from our front porch. I'm thrilled with how they turned out and I hope this inspires you to create some can lanterns of your own. I'd love it if you'd subscribe to my YouTube channel and my blog at chasscrazycreations.com. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in my next video. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.